Welcome to Casual Quest Masters, a casual Master Quest podcast. In this podcast, we'll follow the adventures of a group of characters who simply want to find their way in this world, but a more sinister plot is evolving around them. How will they fare? Let's find out today on Casual Master Quest. Get your dice ready because we're ready to roll another session of Casual Quest Masters. We are a D&D 5e live play adventure. Representing the team is Nick Hill Chotamella. Hi, I play Fall Nightwalker Val Nugoni, and uh, he is ap- he is uh, he is uh, anxious. We also have Tyler back on camera representing Knox. Ah, ready to hit the mountaintops, but taking a break at an old man's shop. And, of course, there's me playing Magdor Bandiron, or, as he should be known, Magdor Handiron. Uh, I, was uh, dead, so I, hated uh, I like that one. That's wonderful. Hey, oh. And, of course, our all powerful dungeon master, Glenn Huston. <laughs> yep, that's me. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Glenn Huston. Welcome to the end of March and a world pandemic, which we are using escapism in a positive, healthy way to avoid. Isolating ourselves. I feel like it's positive because we're spending time with people. We're using our imagination and we're enjoying the company of other people. Good things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. And it practices One of those social distancing. True. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so let's see who's going to do our recap. Who's going to do this recap this week? I rolled a seven. Ooh, I rolled boy. a ten, and I rolled a ten. Fuck! So like, just roll like, off. just like last week. Are you gonna do rock paper scissors again? No, uh, no, 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 no. Because I fell for that, and then Nick just like triple tricked me. <laughs> he was he was light Yagami from Death Note. I was so fooled. All right, um, got an eight. <laughs> I rolled a twelve. So Neener, right. Neener. is me. Two weeks in a row, Mr. Neek. All right, I get ready to. I'll be. Uh, I'd be happy to take my inspiration. All right. Previously on Casual Quest Masters, Magdor wakes up. Where is he? He asks. Tries to buy trinkets from Mud. Trinkets are just a bit too expensive. Magdor walks to the Red Lobster. Knox is there with a pirate hat and talks weird. Magdor eats food off of everyone's plates and gets drunk too quickly. Bull, with his infinite generosity, gives Magdor the gold required to buy his boots. Magdor changes into his new boots and Mud takes his old ones and tells the group about the time warp drinking that moment when Knox is very much against it. Magdor wants toys. Bull doesn't know. Yeah, Vol really doesn't know. Nox, inti- it, Nox intimidates Vol. Twilight doesn't like that. The group starts up the mountain where they meet Brandon. Brandon tells him to come on in. Nox is scared. Magdor is excited. Vol gets a new elemental dagger that goes to Brandon when he dies. Magdor gets more information on his quest. Nox gets more information on his arch magi staff quest. The group goes to sleep, question mark? I think we last left off where they were just still standing around and debating. Or, like, figuring out. Or, like, trading. Uh, they told me to sleep on it, so I literally slept on the staff. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, you said that you would put a bedroll on top of the staff and wake up with early onset final something? I don't know. Sure. That, uh, uh, but now that Glenn has challenged me... Uh, well, oh, there's something I forgot about. to tell you about uh, Tinder Strike as well. Okay. Um, right. Currently, it is not complete, I guess, if that makes any sense. Right. Um, there's well, a gem. wasn't in the contract, though. So no, I guess, uh, it wasn't. I there's a gem missing from the hilt, so you don't get access to everything from it until you complete the item. You have to find that gem. Okay. Uh, we should probably role play that in. That oh, we're going we to. We're going to. I just wanted okay. to let you know that I... Uh, that I gave you basically a no holds barred free legendary item, and I was like, mm, "We got to put a, a little bit of a rein in on that, make him earn it a little bit." <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I just wanted to mm-hmm. say too that that, that currently time warp... it's just a plus two magic weapon, no extra fire damage, no extra resistances or languages currently. So it's just a plus two magic dagger. Um, that time warp was a joke to the song from Rocky Horror Picture Show. If you didn't get that, Nick. 
Let's do hey. the time warp again. All right. I apologize. Fine, I'm a zoomer. Keep, I'll keep my I'll keep my references in check next time. All right. Yes, so please something age end, appropriate. Right, anything after 1995, and I probably still wouldn't have seen it. Ow. Okay, so last time we finished, we ended literally in his place, right? You guys had not exited his emporium yet, right? No, Mag nope, this Magdor's is how we die. surrounded by this toys. Is how we die. He just bunched him up next to him, and he's uh, sleeping in a pile of toys. <laughs> now I should let you know, Vol, that this is not a complete dagger. You will have to find the gem that fits in the hilt here. Okay. Um. Oh. Beats me. But it is a familial artifact, so maybe your yeah. family would have an idea of where that gem is. Hmm. And then Volt's gonna twirl around still and look at the blade and like, well, it's still pretty sharp. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Nigh a sharper blade you will find. Not without some real is searching. This, is this before we go the better afterwards? Probably before. Uh, yeah, sure, before you go to bed. Okay, because I don't think Vol would be too happy to respond to anything, at, you know, in the morning. So I was just curious to see how uh, we're role playing it out. Yeah. Now, do you want to sleep here, or do you want to sleep outside with the donkey? Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, Nox is looking around at the bedroll that's uh, completely covering the uh, the staff at this point, and uh, eh? bye. I think. Uh... I think my I'm right. friends have already decided, Brandon. Okay. Well, I'm going to go sleep up there. And he points to the ceiling and you can see, like, he has, like, a, like a platform built off the side. And you can see a postered bed up on the platform. And he's like, and then he hops on his carpet and flies up there. He's like, find somewhere that's comfortable. Right. Already asleep. Um, Volt. Nox has like one eye open. Volt's right. gonna wander around a little bit until he finds a comfortable spot to like lay down and fall asleep. Like a cat. Just circle, yeah. circle, 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 circle. Or a dog. Yeah. Alright, great. Uh, so now here's the thing there's a very small chance because you guys found a good spot to hunker down that something could happen to the mule outside. Now, all I need you to do is roll a d20, but one of you is going to roll the d20, and one of you is going to choose a random number between 1 and 20. If you choose the number that the person rolls, something could happen. That There's only a 5% chance that something can happen. So I won't roll, it's one of you three. Somebody choose, somebody roll. Um, Tyler, do you want to roll? I'll choose. I'm gonna choose six. Oh wait, no, I'm gonna roll. Okay, yep. Roll button. Oh wait, oh shit. Okay, you gotta choose first, then I roll. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm choosing. Or you can say four. I rolled a four. Uh, <laughs> four. Just say four. See what happens. I'm choosing the number eleven. Okay. Okay. And I rolled the second four, so I guess uh, that works out. That that decides it. was a four. It. Yes. You, you didn't roll again. eleven. Oof. Oof. Okay, great. Yeah, so you wake up in the morning uh, feeling like P. Diddy, uh, and it seems as though nothing has been disturbed uh, within the contents of the Emporium, but you won't know for sure until you leave. Ah, I feel like P. Diddy. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> Gosh. Mm. Uh, I want to keep all these. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can if you pay more things. What are you willing to give up? He's gonna look over at Vol and Knox. How about you give up your ability to grow hair? Well, that's will like my current hair fall out. No, I'll just take it, and then it won't grow anymore. No, that's like asking a dwarf to give up being a dwarf. Hmm. Not what? Wait, wait, wait. Do I get everything? No. No, oh, never mind then. You yeah, take my say, whole emporium for your hair? How much do you think your hair is worth, Goldilocks? 
<laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna look down and just see like crumbs and food and shit all in his hair. <laughs> at least Old bits of snot, like like Rick and Morty. <laughs> at least two thousand. Uh, Magdor's beard and cast light, just so it looks like it's glowing. Literally, oh. uh, <sighs> it just makes you all know, the dirt and swat. grime look more. <laughs> 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 Cast shadows on the wall. On the grossness. <laughs> <laughs> There's monsters. <laughs> well, that is a glowy beard. Mm. Do you need anything else? Because I want to leave. Me too. But with the staff. And I'm oh, standing no, up no, challengingly. No. Yes. Y no? Yes? I rescind my offer. It was too generous. You fuck face. <laughs> Magdor's gonna I look guess. over. <laughs> I cast message at uh, Magdor say, let's kill him, boys. The, the moment, the moment Nog says, uh, you fuck face, uh, Vol's going to do like the, okay. Um, and, and he's just going to start walking up the entrance. He's like, I'm not dealing with this. Vol's just going to go out and get some fresh air. He's just going to like, oh, oh, sure. He's uh, been kind no, of I mean, if you were willing to give up something valuable, very, very, very valuable. I, I, I realized when I saw the piece of the staff of the Arch Magi that I perhaps my my vision was skewed a bit about what was important and what was valuable. And my staff of the Magi does matter to me. There is a story behind it coming into my possession, and parting wouldn't be it would be a it'd be a difficult thing. All right, if you give it to me, I'll listen to your boring ass story. That's not enough. Well, take it, and I'm gonna, like, Nox, like, spent an hour waking up, like, his hand on the staff trying to attune to it. Uh, probably couldn't because it was already attuned. I'm not sure how that mechanic worked. We're not gonna detail it because I don't actually want the staff at this point. And I'm just gonna throw it uh, at Brandon and just go. He definitely catches it and spins it around and then pops it behind his back and it just disappears. But he let go of it. Let's go of it, but it's like it falls into an extra dimensional space or something. Oh. You know, I thought you were a wizard, or I'm mistaken, but you look like a goddamn weeaboo. I'm out of here. I'm gonna roll. Uh, Nox is gonna roll through bedroll and huff out because I thought Nox was gonna <laughs> roll out. Um, <laughs> but, All right, so I'm headed up the Nox is packing up. What are you doing, Magdor? I know you're attached to this pile of trinkets. Uh, he's going to look. He says, "I've given it a lot of thought. I want to know if you have something." Huh. You have a spare, uh, portable hole. Mm, spare is an interesting word. No, unfortunately, the ones nice. that I currently have, I'm using. All right, well, I know you'll have no trouble finding us. If you ever come into one, I could use it. We have one in my family that we use to store our metals. Mm, and I think it could be useful. What a useful. wonderful idea. Huh. So if yes, you come if I come to across another one, one, I will set it aside for you. How about that? All right. Uh, deal. And he'll shake his hand. Or stick his hand shake, out. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. And then uh, head up after... I appreciate this work. Craftsmanship, by the way. Th thank you. It's from... Well, you know. And then he's gonna walk away. Gaunt? He's gonna give... From God? Gaunt? The God of Invention? Warden. Ooh. Ooh. Good luck finding that hammer. Let's go. Gonna give, he kind of like he's going to give one last go. look to the uh, piles of boys. Bye, bye, butterfree. And then walk <laughs> And he kind of like shuffles Tears you up, like down you have face. a moment. <laughs> um, and you step out of the chest, and it is cold. Uh, it, it seems as though uh, a storm is set in. Nothing bad happened to the the donkey. He's just. He's just a little more snowy than he was before, so there's not a lot of sunlight just because of the heavy cloud cover and the, the stiff snowfall. Uh, the winds are pretty sharp, but luckily, uh, where you currently have the donkey and the cart and stuff, it was set inside of a cave, so that that's not really something you're experiencing, but you can hear it and see it, feel it as soon as you come out, that it's going to be a tough day. Cool. Uh, I think Nox would be in full care and mode at this point. Just like full uh, entitled angry mom customer. You turn into Karen. I thought you said Karen, like C A I R N, and I was like, that's a reference I don't get. You said Karen. Oh my god, guys. 
I have to tell you something you're not, later. You're the second about... person from a different situation that said that so yeah. far. I I have to tell you something about a Karen later, but I can't do it on stream. <laughs> Remind me about Karen, okay? Um, when Vol steps out, okay. he wants to spend some time waking up and bonding with uh, Twilight. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, uh, in the cave, the, the the dragon is fully fine being outside of your, you know, your hood or wherever you were keeping him. Uh, but he, as soon as you step out, you can tell that he, from your previous experience, he's not going to want anything to do with being exposed to those elements. Okay. Um. Now, the one thing, the one thing that it does. The dagger that actually kind of would help you in this circumstance. The one thing it's retained of its features is that if you attack with it, it will be warm for a little while. So it could, if you like, like hit like a, you know, a stick or something, you could keep that inside and help keep the dragon warm a little bit. It'll function kind of like one of those bags that you pop and make it warm. What right, those right. Hand warmers. Um, I don't think that makes your hand warm. <laughs> Nox is using like a mixture of like Eldritch Blast and other arcanic energy to carve into the cave wall. Uh, he's trying, or sorry, they're trying to do like bathroom graffiti at this point. And they don't know how to spell uh, Brandon, but they're going to try their best. Just uh, plain old Call and just, Brandon like, for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you could probably just say oh. his name and he'll be there. Brandon! <laughs> yep, yep, I'm, I'm going to do that. And, but then. I'm going to, like, realize that that sounds like maybe they're actually a good reference or whatnot, so I'm just going to, like, write in parentheses, he, S-U-X, and then uh, just kind of, like, leave it for a different any window. E S U X. E S U X. Oh. Yeah, oh. And Magdor is going to grab his hand out of his pouch of holding. And as he's pulling it out, he's gonna say, "It's all right. You don't have to be shy anymore. Won't take you." And as it, as you try to grab it out, it hops up, climbs up your arm, and sits on your shoulder, and like flicks you in the face. <laughs> it fl- it flicks me. Yeah, it just gives you a little flick, and then like hides all behind right, your roll head. Roll for initiative. <laughs> I flick it back. <laughs> all right, you fl- you see him. You see Magdor <laughs> fighting with his hand, like they're flicking each other, and it's like moving around his neck, like, flip, and it, like, claws up on his head and, like, pops him on the nose, and then he smacks it, you know, like... <laughs> for some for some reason, Vol's not surprised. He just accepts it as normal. Like, Do you have right. the alert feed? Shh. No. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I, I understand. Um, or a sentinel shield. Vol's gonna... I would say this is loud. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Vol's gonna turn around to Magdor and Nox and, like, um... This this little one's gonna need a, a warmer place to hide in. Do you mind letting him hide in either one of your cloaks? Bull's not wearing a cloak. Uh, Magdor's gonna say Rutabaga, and he's gonna make his cloak like have a little, or his overcloak have a little pouch in it. And it's just the right size for a pseudo dragon. Um, Tyler, yeah. Um, and then Volt's gonna look at Twilight and be like, alright, uh, Magdor or Nox? Your, your pick, you're gonna hide with one of them. As a player, I, I'm curious, is this, uh, since he's using Rutabaga for his, uh, his cloak, is it an actual pouch for him, or a pocket, or is it like an illusion of a pocket? It's technically an illusion of a pocket. But, oh, you yeah. gonna give it to him? No, no, it's an illusion of a pocket. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> well, everyone's like, okay, we do. I'm like, yes. Because it's not uh, even my Yeti cloak with... either. It's just a chain <laughs> or a scale mail cloak. Uh, yeah, so it's just, yeah, it's the illusion of a cloak. Um, uh, how Are you guys vying for who is going to get to hang out with Twilight? Or are you just no, letting Magdor Twilight just choose? No, thinks he's being helpful. Oh, fair enough. And I don't think Nox would uh, just, you know, be perceptive enough to actually realize that 
yeah, the situation Magdor just created essentially with this uh, illusory pocket. So I think uh, okay. they would let Twilight go for it. Okay, so what? This is where we'll use a fun passive check. What is your passive animal handling? Which is just ten plus that modifier. Mine. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Nice. That's pretty good. What's yours? Oh, mine. Yeah, uh, both eleven. Of you. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. So like, just passively, Twilight feels like. Maybe be a little more comfortable with Magdor. He's he's a little furrier, more maybe choice. a little warmer. You know, so uh, he flies over uh, to you and c- tries to sit in the pocket, and then immediately realizes that there's nothing there, and then goes under your beard. Yeah, I was gonna say Magdor lifts his beard up, <laughs> <laughs> and then just pops his head out from like right under your chin. And then when that happens, I... Vol's gonna go and kneel down with like a piece of dried meat and start feeding it to Twilight. He seems content. I quietly, since I didn't open my cloak, uh, I'm gonna, like inside the cloak, I'm gonna put the little piece of uh, ration I had ready for Twilight back in my pocket, and <gasps> uh-huh. I'm gonna wipe away a, 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 like a, the world's smallest tear from the face. I'm gonna look <laughs> look down at Twilight. And say, you know, you're not the first creature to house up in there. And then you see it grab one of the bugs. <laughs> and Twilight starts <laughs> preening your beard and eating the bits of food out of it. <laughs> hey, at least I'm strong be... after this is done. And we present both for my family, <laughs> at least. A clean beard. <laughs> oh no, you didn't pay the electric bills. I'm gonna end light on Hector's beard <laughs> and uh, <laughs> shut off the electricity. <laughs> what is this, the game of life? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pay your electric bill. Pay $5,000. All right. Uh, the two of you ready? It's gonna be a bad joke. Gonna, it's it's gonna be a tough day, as you can Excuse see. Excuse you, pointing out the to the. Us. I'm gonna point to the hand in the dragon. Uh, five what? then in the in that vein, and maybe six. Wolf six. pointing at Cra- Craven. Craven. Magdor's yeah, and the hand Magdor's pops into the it, so he's gonna use his uh, Raven brooch and summon his Raven as well. There is a bunch of things here now. <laughs> Did you just use the figurine to summon a, a s- silver ring? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're we're doing this. Okay. Are you guys ready? Oh, I think we're ready now. All right. I'm gonna do a single stretch, and uh, this I don't think this should count, but I'm gonna do a single dodge, just to uh, get ready and stretch up for the day. Wonderful. All right. And um, Raiden comes out and says, all right, boys, bye. And then uh, kind of like he's being sucked into a little black hole. He snaps his fingers and <laughs> disappears. None of us are boys. What an odd man. But Changely, he's a dwarf. He's a, a glide. Mm. Hey, I was a boy once. Why has he got a donkey if he could just teleport like that? Magdor, he lives alone. Don't judge the man for his choices in life. Just just be thankful that we ran into him, I guess. Mm. Anyways. Uh, all right. Why? What good has he done for us? <clears throat> and then Vol's going to pull out his dagger and spin it around and put it back. Oh, I don't know. And Vol's going <laughs> to... <Fuck. laughs> uh, uh, even if I could just attach a dagger to a staff... Start looking at my obsidian dagger, dagger from the Raven Queen. When he says that, I'm that gonna toss. You. I'm gonna toss a dagger back and see. I'm gonna blindly toss one of my other daggers back at Nox. At him? Well, like kind of like Poor over him. my shoulder toss. That sounds like an at. Glad Is this an attack roll? See- I'm not trying to make it an attack roll. I will be very explicit. He says that so you're trying I'm, to like it's like here. This is for you, sort of toss. Yeah, but over my shoulder because I'm heading out now. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So and what's, your what's your passive perception? What's your passive perception? Which one? Uh, dog shit. I'm gonna. T- uh, <laughs> if it's a ten or higher, gonna... you're good. Oh, cool. Eleven. Great, yeah, you notice it coming, you're able to snatch it out of the air. Uh, maybe not as deftly as some, but you still catch it just fine. I catch it by having it stab right through my palm. 
<laughs> there, that way you don't need to use your fancy dagger. Uh, that you can just you, tie that to your staff. No, I could probably attach that to your staff for you. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. All right, your ah, ass. That hurts. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I follow full out. Um. As as I'm walking out, I'm gonna look at Knox and say, "You get some stuff for your staff from him," and then walk out. I uh, he. I'm gonna like uh just wrap up uh comically my hand just a little bit. Uh he, he told me to go look at an obvious place to try to find more information of the staff. I suppose that's true. Aye. He also let us I sleep in a think... place that's warm and not cold. Ah, that's right. Fire doesn't exist in this world. What a shame. <laughs> I didn't want to keep a fire going. Where are we going, Vol? Uh, my, uh, memories shall lead the way. What does Vol have right. to do? So you start oh, floating. Wild. You start because floating. of the storm, you're gonna make a survival check, but you're gonna do it with disadvantage, as it is a little harder to get your bearings, just naturally. Well, <clears throat> What is your preferred, uh, terrain? Is it mountains? No, it is forests. It's forests? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Because that probably would have, ah. I spent most of my time, most of Vol's adult life was, or at least half of it, was off the, the spine. In the forest, yeah. yeah. More recently, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, what did you get with a disadvantage on this? Right, we'll check. I'm going to use one of my things to make it uh, a normal roll. Yep. Okay. All right, Vol, this is your preferred terrain, I'm sure, because you've lived so much of your life in the spine. Which is why Vol rolled an eight. Wonderful. That didn't okay. sound wonderful at all. Um, so you travel for the first part of the day, um, and by the time you hit midday or so, you realize that you've basically gone the exact opposite direction. Not back where you came, but like instead, if you needed to go north, you went straight west. Right. Um, not south, but like you went right. like kind of perpendicular to where you needed to go. Um, but then this, you know, you kind of get a glimpse of the sun for a moment near midday, um, and you can try and correct your course. But at this point, you've lost about a, a quarter's day travel. Uh, Magdor's going to look readjust. up at the mountain. Say, "Oh, is that the time warp? Look, we went the wrong <laughs> way." Do. Sure. Um, I we're not going to the time warp. I will say, I think we did go the wrong way. Uh. What, 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 what was that for? We went the wrong way. Um, it's a mountain. How do we go the wrong way? The only wrong way is down. Not a mountain. mountain. It's a mountain range. <laughs> range? <laughs> Whoa. Who's that? Who's that mysterious voice said mountain range? Oh, it's, call, it's, it's called an wind. echo, Nox. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm going to shoot uh. Firebolt uh, into the... <laughs> been a while since I've been up in... Uh, uh, roll the hit with that fireball. Oh, boy. And where Have are you a shooting time. fireball? What's up? Where are you shooting the firebolt? Uh, off into a mysterious, uh, opaque pile, windy snow thing. Uh, the mountain or out into the open? Are you shooting it towards the snow or out into the air? I feel like uh, in my head with those blizzard conditions, like we can barely see around us. So I'm just, sure. I'm going to shoot towards the mysterious voice that said mountain range. Oh, I'm not going to penalize you for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you shoot it off and uh, nothing's there. Screw you oh, guys. Uh, um, I, I think <gasps> I can fix this. Uh, sorry, going this way. Wait, go ahead and make uh, this a rubble check again. With disadvantage. Are we not able to give him the help action? Uh, are you trained in survival? This is one of the circumstances where I think you would have to be trained in it in order to grant a helping hand that would be valuable in the circumstance. Sometimes, uh, like, if there was no storm... If, if I turn it to blue... Can I guide him? But I, I think that'd be worse. Blue Vol. I, I'm going to go up to Vol and I'm going to put a hand on his shoulder. You do this. And I'm going to cast Guide. Guide. Um, and what does guide do? Do a one d four. Hey, that might actually help. Yeah, I mean statistically it has to. It's at least gonna give you one more. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so base <laughs> roll survival of uh, nine with the one d four. It's now a twelve. Hey, there you go. Yeah, you get yourself back on track. You still you weren't able to make up the time that you lost, but you are you were able to um, uh, get back on track effectively. Um, so you're a little behind from your previous kind of like estimates uh and uh along the way too you realize that if you would have continued that direction you didn't notice before but you were probably heading into some troll territory um there was some bits that you know along the way that you may have missed because the storm was so heavy but you made your way out of that area um no longer risking uh, an encounter with them um and uh, you get to the end of this. That that this is the second day, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The second full no. day of travel. Thir- th- third day. Third. Third, third full day of travel. One, yeah. That was a nat yeah. twenty. Yeah. So we... nothing happened, and then second night we went with Brandon. So this would yeah. be pushing towards the third day. Do you think you probably because you're a little behind? Uh, it could take a maximum of five days to get where you need to go. Uh, so, but if you make really good time, you could make it there tomorrow. Uh, but go ahead and collectively, if you could, uh, try and figure out where you want to bunker, you know, hunker down um, by making a perception check to find somewhere good. Like all of us make a perception check? Yeah, I figured you'd all be looking for something. I see, no- <laughs> I see nothing. I see nothing. Just call it out. I got a nine. Uh, I rolled a 20. 16. Yeah. That 20 finds a beautiful secluded cave that if you didn't know it was there, you would have no idea it existed. You just kind of found the right perspective to notice it. Um, You were at no risk of being attacked tonight. So you, unless there's anything else you want to do on your, you know, light activity during your, your long rest, uh, it will go by uneventfully and safely. Um, Vol's gonna uh, uh, uh. look at Doc saying, "Good, good job spotting this through all of that." I mean, it's 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 just a a hole. Uh, do we have any kind of wood? Don't doubt the simple hole. Sometimes, uh, are you coming on to me, Vol? Because now it's not the time. I uh, please, you're a child. Um, Vol's gonna go out in the cave and look for, see if he can find any sources of wood or, like, timber or whatever. Okay. That's gonna be a perception check or survival. Your choice, but either way, the storm is still causing disadvantage on the check. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Fortunate. Um, eight. Eight? Uh, yeah, you find enough tinder to start a fire, but nothing to keep a fire going. You could get a fire going for about an hour maybe mm-hmm. uh, but it wouldn't last through the night for sure okay um Will's gonna come back in like ah well it's a little rough out there hard to see um we could either use this now in the middle of the night or in the morning to warm us up not gonna last very long well I spent the past four hours after you made a little last statement and then he walked out to gather tinder and uh Really? I'm too young for you? Not because we're family? That's that's your biggest reason? You scare me sometimes, man. <sighs> I'm gonna start feeding uh, Craven. And, uh, Volt's gonna call for Twilight and sit in the corner of the cave. And, Brent, and Brandon, not Brandon, Brandon, you know that Silver Raven works for two hours, all right? Or two hours or eight hours, hours or something, so... It, it would have turned into back into little, yeah. you know, little figurine again for you to pop, um, you know, tuck in your pocket. While he's out getting wood and forever long, I would like to use both of my channel divinities, okay. um, each an hour piece. I'm going to dump out. I, I think we talked about this before, but I don't remember. I had made the first coin. And we, did we decide that I could do 10 per channel divinity after that? That feels right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to dump out 20 of the coins just the flat coins and just make 20 friend coins sweet you got 20 more friend coins should be all that i need we don't we don't make very many friends i'm gonna look over at Knox. wait why why are you looking at me for 
Do you want to give a coin to Brandon? Yes. Oh, well, I mean... I'm going to just go hold, back to the cave and he's... I'm going to hold a coin up into the air, and I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I'm just going to hold it up to the air, and I'm just going to drop it. <laughs> I had to roll a 20, and I did. Uh, a hand pops out of an ethereal space, and you hear a voice say, Thank you! And then it just disappears. <laughs> what, <laughs> what an odd man. Magda, <laughs> Magda's just going to stare, because he didn't expect it either. <laughs> that was, uh, this was the roll right there. What the fuck? Magda, uh, could, uh, I, could I have another one of those coins, please? Uh, 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 I, and I'm gonna actually hand five to Vol and five to Nox. If they'll take it. Wow, does that make us best friends if we collect them? <laughs> this many? E- each one has a number on it. Uh, one of eight, two of eight, three of eight. How many do you have now that you've minted? I have ten, and they both have five. I have twenty-three. I mean, total. You've made twenty-three. Okay. Oh no, no, and I have twenty-three so far... left. Okay, so but so far outside of you three, Brandon and Vol's brother are the only outsiders that have them. And Sibsian, Sibsian, Sibsian. Okay, Charlemagne. so those three. Yeah, Sibsian. Not Algira or Never Ember? No, no, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, cool. Perfect. The local guards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The guard captain. Uh, <laughs> before he sleeps, Vol's just going to spend his time uh, bonding with Twilight. Go and make an animal handling check. Yay. No pull, disadvantage on pull this Twilight, check. Pull Twilight out of my beard and hand him back. Uh, 21. You, like, open your beard and he just... <laughs> He wants to spread his wings and fly, and luckily, Nox found a great cave, which has a decent amount of ceiling space, so he's able to get all that energy out. Uh, You got a 25? 21. 21, okay. Yeah. You have a... You spend time, like, throwing the bits that he would eat into the air, and he, like, Ariel catches them while he's flying around, so he's able to eat and get his wings at the same time. Use Uh, (laughs) I'm going to look at my other hand I'm going to look at my hand and say how far can you go from me you get some wood Um, and it just and it moves 30 feet away and then it takes an extra step and then just falls down not and it just is not moving I'm just going to stare at it for a second Uh, he's gonna stand up and take one step, and uh, take a step, and it goes, bloop, and then it bloop, 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 runs back. To I, you. I think your your Bluetooth uh, disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I'm gonna put the uh, staff of power <laughs> on the wall, uh, leaning against uh, one of the cave walls, and. Uh, they're gonna. Uh, Nox is gonna start practicing their nightly dodge, but they realize they kind of like cheaped out the last uh, day or two just because they've been paranoid. But uh, they're gonna try it by. Uh, but they're gonna cast haste. Okay. On themselves uh, using their arcane focus that they started off with, and uh, they're gonna start dodging around the room like fucking Sonic. Yes. So just technically, rough. what that means is I'm gonna allow you to make. Because I let you do one per long rest, right? Before? I I believe so, yes. So yeah, with if you cast haste, you can feasibly get two successful or two attempts in in a in that time. Uh sure. Uh acrobatics, I guess. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we read on. Yeah, yeah, that feels fair. Uh I got two twenty ones. Yeah. Uh, two successful checks. Boom, mark them down. You just like Nox's voice, for some reason, is like an octave higher while in this haste state, but you see nothing but a blur, but touch, 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 and it's just bouncing off the walls and stuff. Touch, ow! <laughs> Can't hear you, bro. Oh, I mean, uh, Vol. Vol's gonna turn to Magda and like, he's getting pretty good at that. I mean, he's got to. He's got, like, arms of a chicken. 
That's true. Um, Magdor, do you think I could borrow really quick some of your... Actually, no, wait. And then Vol's gonna pull out one of his coins and be like, could you just make a tiny little hole in one of the... in, in this coin? Uh, uh, I'm gonna pull out my Tinker's tools. Yep. You have a metal stamp, effectively, that you can punch a hole in uh, that. Like, for his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call my hand down and he just fucking... Ching. Yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna take some of the rope that I have, cut off a tiny bit, and like unweave it, and like to have thinner strands, and then basically make a coin necklace for Twilight. Okay. So go ahead and just like take like if you have a 50 foot rope, it's now a 49 foot rope. But you also have extra strands if you want to do something with the rest of them. Yeah, I'm just going to pocket them. Cool. You got extra twine bits. Magdor's (laughs) going to see this, and you see him kind of like stroking his beard. And uh, he opens up his jug of alchemy and takes a big swig and says, All right, I'm going to bed. Touch, touch, touch. (laughs) As lethargy hits me, and I just drop to the ground just heaving. (laughs) So I'll probably get some rest. If this storm doesn't let up tomorrow, it's just going to be as bad. Also gonna start going to sleep. I don't know how the role play when you leave uh, haste and you gotta get, spend six seconds doing pretty much nothing. It's perfect just... that it means that you're just sleepy now. It's like sex. <laughs> now I'm sleepy. <laughs> you know, like okay, haste. Now I'm sleepy. <laughs> so you're just to make sure I understand. You're comparing haste to sex. Uh, I mean, I feel like it's vigorous activity. Yeah. Okay. You just see uh, Nox, like, clawing their way towards their bedroom. I just uh, had haste. And... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you successful all find haste, your way too. to bed. You do a great job of bonding with your animals and learning how to dodge and making more coins and all that jazz. And you wake up in the morning fully rested, feeling much better. Um, it sounds like they, it's still snowing uh, outside. Uh, you can hear the pitter-patter of the snow on the ground, but you do see light coming through the entrance to the cave, indicating that even if it is snowing, it is a much less um, combative environment, right. I guess is a way to say that. It's it's going to be easier to have travel, hopefully. Vol would have um, woken up early to start a fire to warm everybody up before we leave. I need more wood. Uh, I, I didn't use uh, the wood. Oh, great. Yeah, you can you can get a fire that'll go for about an hour, long enough to cook something if you want. As soon as the fire starts getting to a respectable size, Magdor wakes up and uh, he kind of scoots closer. He says, uh, can I borrow Twilight for a second? Twilight? Like... Uh, Twilight, Twilight was. Oh gosh, she's gone. You like look around and you realize that Twilight was in your bed, Volvol. Like he was, he was just like nuzzled in there, and when you got up, he just stayed in. So he pops his head out and looks at you, Magdor. And, and I'm gonna pull um, some rope out, similar, and I'm actually going to use it to uh, measure Twilight's neck from uh, the base of his head to. Uh, and the, hmm, I think I got an idea. All right. And I'm going to take out uh, two more of those iron chips. And I'm going to fashion kind of like a necklace for him um, with the friend coin imprinted on the breast of it. And it's just going to go from like the base of his neck to his wing. Not anything like protective, just a thin metal that uh, he can when wear better than When you do look at this too, you realize that you could probably use these iron coins to fashion like dragon scale mail for him we'll just start small for now oh i know i just you as a you know metal worker at a blacksmith know that you could do that if it with the amount of coins that you have and given a little bit of time you could probably give him something that would protect him from damage yeah so for now we'll just do the necklace it's not really a necklace it's almost like a breastplate but it only reaches to the wings so it doesn't like cover any of his back or anything yeah. And I'm gonna hand it to Vol. But okay, uh, it's got like a clasp on it. When you're when you're looking at his stat block, uh, while he's got this on, it's effectively like he's wearing a shield. Okay. So he has a plus two to his armor class. Nice. 
and you know you see oh. the friendship coin on it but this one's a little different this one's in the four corners got a raven pseudo dragon a hand and then a question mark <laughs> Ragdoll, that's. I uh, don't know what the other one is. That's amazing. That's amazing handiwork. Thank you, Magdor. Twilight, look at this. Look at what Magdor made for you. And then I'm gonna hold it out and see if um, Twilight will let me put it on him. Mhm. Mm I trust you. Put that bitch right you know, on Twilight. I'm gonna say, you, you know. I'm not getting on Twilight. Fuck that. Not not every dwarf can work with metal this small. Oh, it's a, that, that's that's a gift, Magdor. I, I'm really impressed that the 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 handiwork, the craftsmanship. Yes, praise Morden. Testament to your skill, truly. All right, is everybody uh, warmed up? Oh sh shit! I, I like uh, Nox just immediately like when Magdor says praise Morden. Uh, Nox has been avoiding like giving praise to the traveler. Uh, they're gonna start doing that and. Uh, just on like a side note, they also or a sideline, they're gonna also give thanks to uh, Mother. Thank you. To, uh, Thank you for doing that. Because uh, you've yeah, for a moment you feel a little bit of unease as you, you know, you were planning on doing that, but like a bit of unease comes from that area where the dagger is and then it is sated immediately upon your... Th Thank you, Traveler. I... Uh for this not so safe journey but I suppose you like to fuck with us every now and then but I still want to give everything to your credit ow ow and of course I'm saving the best for last mother <laughs> you know you know you're my real favorite parent if I had to pick between the two you give better Christmas presents praise you too <laughs> wonderful great All right. and I think yeah, I'm ready to are... go alright let's uh Let's hope I don't get lost this time. <laughs> that wouldn't be as good. Track away, no, I tracker. thought I heard some trolls behind us. Hmm. Yeah! Trolls. What the fuck is that? I cast Firebolt. <laughs> I, I do remember <laughs> trolls on this side of the mountain. Um, oh, do it a must be a stray check. mountain cat. Do a perception check. All of us? Uh, No, just Nox, because he shot a Firebolt into the sky at the sound. Uh a 19. Yeah, you Not see the, plus one. the tail end and a bit of the wing of a white flying shape in the cloud that disappears from view almost immediately upon you looking. Uh, Nox? Guys, I I, I, I done just saw a fucking dragon. We got was one right troll. here, and I'm going to lift up my beard. Look, that that thing's a little uh, chicken nuggy. That thing was a full-on chicken. Chicken. That means we're getting closer. Look, Nox is a child. It's okay. Then we're getting closer. Think so. All right. Only one way to go, but up, I guess. Let me see if my memory serves me. Time well. to go north of the wall. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Magdor Bull, if there's one thing I'm excited for you guys. Having haste last night was like the best thing. I'm a change changeling. I hope you guys lose your haste genity soon. I'm so excited for you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna be your your wingman. <laughs> you cast haste on me. Can I throw my hammer more? Uh, you 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 bet you bet. Well, not now. You're now you're super Yes, yes. Oh, you're gonna love if it. If you do that, so I, much thrusting. If you do that to me, could I throw <laughs> Magdor better? You could throw him faster. Imagine the caliber. True can. Magdor was all like like excited at first about throwing his hammer faster, then he realized what Bull was asking about being thrown faster, and he just kinda stops in his tracks like uh I'm not sure sure about faster. Faster means more damage, right? Well Uh I guess. I mean it it'd be a higher velocity, I think it would work out, but I didn't expect uh Together, I mean, if you guys want to lose your haste genity together, we can do that, but... Hmm? Look at that armor. Well, thank goodness Magdor, I'm you'll be fine if I throw you really ha hard and fast. What All about right. Twilight? When is if we threw Twilight? We're not throwing now Twilight. That, uh... Nobody throws Twilight. Did Twilight just shit in <laughs> my beard? 
I was about to cast Fireball, yep. but I guess I shouldn't do that. So, yeah. A little bit of poop runs down your front of your, uh, your armor. Magdor's, uh, go Magdor's gonna take the jug of alchemy and pop open the uh, ale cork, take a swig, and then just pour it on his beard. Yeah, you wash the poop off with the beer. I did not... Uh -huh. It's a very Magdor I, thing. Nox starts uh, wrenching. Magdor, I'm sorry. Um, let's continue on. The, the, the snow will clean that snow like right off you. See, see like small that, animal that's, bones that's in snow. it. Yeah. It's not the first time, won't be the last. Right, and it's actually to... nice enough how when you step outside that uh, uh, Twilight just hops out of your beard and starts flying around. Oh, I was going to say before that, uh, I'm going to take some ale, put it in my hand, and hold it up to Twilight's face. Hates it. Yep. All right, Hates you can it. go. And he lifts up my beard. Flies out. You, you, you know the sad hunting. part? People would probably pay good money to have ale filtered by pseudo dragon guano. Hmm. Probably. We're, well, hmm. let's not use my. Let's the not use Twilight IPA to test dwarves. that. Not yet. I mean, you, there's a slushy right on the ground right there. Vol's gonna keep walking the moment he says that. <laughs> I think about it and I keep walking <laughs> because I'm still uh, retching. <laughs> It's an Magdor alcohol slushy down. on the ground, Magdor. <laughs> Magdor looks down and he who hold on. Mag He's tempted. Mag Mag Magdor, Magdor, please. Let's keep going. Magdor, no. let's not. Uh, Magdor takes a, just a little piece of it and kinda licks it. He's mostly like poop. And he's <laughs> spit it out and uh take another big swig of his ale and then continues on. No more poop. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so go ahead and make a survival check. Oh, great and mighty Gaida. I don't know why we don't Magdor get things done very quickly. Jeez. Um, 19. 19, great, yeah. You make good progress. Um, and, and uh... Can, can I say for the record, either Magdor or I are basically casting Gaida on him uh, each time sure. he makes a survival check? Yeah, there can only be one instance, which I think you guys know. But, yeah, absolutely. Right. One one instance of guidance can exist we'll, for all those We'll checks. race to guide him each time. Like every time that bull starts looking around, I'll... so do you want me to uh, yeah. <laughs> add on guide to this roll as well? Oh no, you're fine. Okay, you get through the full day. Um, now all you got to do is uh, find your way. Let's see if the weather's turned at all. Yes. Uh, so it's gotten heavy, not as heavy as it was for the last day or so. It's heavier because it kind of like went from you know a hundred to about forty, and now it's back to about sixty by the time you guys are ready to make camp. So go ahead and find uh, a place that you'd like to camp for the night. Um, survival or perception. Whatever you guys would like to do. Hmm. Um, I rolled a nine. Nice. I got an eleven. Okay. And I got a twelve. Great. Yeah, you find I'm a spot that you think is going to be pretty safe, but you're well aware of the fact that it's still, it's probably the best you can find currently. Um, I started building an igloo. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my Facebook chat just went. Blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, yeah. So you bunk down for the night. Uh, is there anything you wanted to do while you were resting up? I don't think this would be a good place to uh, train my dodging nearly as well as the previous one. So mm -hmm. I would pull out my. Uh, dummy's guide to speak draconic and uh, try a little draconic with uh, well I would try it with either of them if they know how to speak it but otherwise I'd just try it with uh, Twilight just to see if they uh, respond yeah you can definitely tell when it understands you in draconic for sure so that would be a valid test for whether or not you're doing something right so go ahead I'll and just... uh, make what did we do for that intelligence Something? I don't think anything, because technically I'm proficient. I'm just trying to do it for flavor. Oh, you're just doing it for... You're proficient in Draconic already? Yes. Okay, great. Awesome. There's yeah, no you... reason, like, speaking player the DM, there's absolutely no reason that I'm aware of that Nox should know Draconic. So I just wanted to say, eh, yeah, well, let's, let's freshen it up. I uh, picked it up yeah. at a bar or two. Yeah, you're just and working so... on your, your regional diction. <laughs> You're getting more fluent, yeah. Twilight Schneer, Sabak. As I tried to say hello. Hmm. <laughs> and it sits in front Tash, of you, excited that you're Tash speaking. Furnar. Uh, how are you? <laughs> I, I, 
I don't know what that means. And it, and it spins. Well, I mean, he's not speaking. He's just roaring in I, I, response. Oh, I, I know. I know. I'm just saying. Like, but yeah, he's he, he is excited that you're speaking to him in Draconic. Because he can understand Common and Draconic, but obviously Draconic is a little more, you know, home for him. Well, while this is going on, uh, Magdor has his rope again. He's just kind of measuring Twilight while Twilight's like running around in circles and stuff. And he's going to be satisfied and start working on uh, some back armor that is not going okay. to turn out right. Okay. <laughs> just just already decided that it's not. Go ahead and make... Uh, an, uh, you're trained in blacksmithing, so go ahead and make a... Speed! Uh, intelligence modifier, I think, with proficiency because you're proficient with blacksmithing tools, right? Sure. Okay, and while you're making that roll, not or Vol, what are you doing? Uh, Vol's just kind of hanging out, just keeping a lazy eye uh, open, uh, out and waiting. He's noticing. He would have liked to have bonded with Twilight, but he's noticing uh, Twilight and Nox getting along, so he's not going to interfere tonight. Oh. Arshnir Baka, who's your favorite? <laughs> and then immediately just uh, hops into Vol's lap and looks at you. I rolled a nat one, so I got a oh, five. Oh, God. You make some great stuff. You think that it's terrible. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's like, it's you think it's good until you like match it up with the dragon, and then you're like, this is not right at all. <laughs> You make a goat. <laughs> Just like three what times about a his large size. Wooden badger. <laughs> Wait, this is a dagger, not armor. What? <laughs> and uh Nox, while uh they're having this moment, you've asked, you know, the dragon who is favorite, it sits on the lap, he matches up the armor, you know, and it's not right, and they're looking at it. Uh you feel a tingling from within your bag where you know your dagger to be. I, uh, you, you see, like, it hit this picture, grayscale, close up on the face, a bead of sweat. Nox knows, uh, someone needs to talk, and, uh, Nox will still slowly reach for the, uh, the, the dagger. And I'll pull out, uh, Vol's dagger. The fuck are you doing? And I'm gonna throw the, the dagger back towards, uh, Vol. It's like, Okay. Ow, fuck. No. You throw the dagger towards Vol? Uh, the, uh, the dagger that Vol gave me, yes. Cool. Yeah, it lands in the ground next to him. And then I'll pull out the obsidian dagger. Yeah, and as soon as you pull the obsidian dagger, you feel as though everything around you has stopped. A full halt on the scene in front of you as Magdor is like, weirdly looking at the, the, you know, the armor confusedly. The dragon is kind of, like, yarping up at, at Vol. Vol's got a little smirk on his face as he's more prone to, as the days go by with you guys, smiling ever so much more. And, um, from out of the shadows, you see a familiar face in the caverns, and she walks towards you. Kind of imagine Morgana. That's what I imagine her looking like, a little bit. Um, she walks towards you, and she says, Mother! Hi. How are you? I'm doing great, but how about, how about you? Uh, uh, forgive me, my my house here is a, a, a bit dirty. Uh, I, I'd I clean for you, but it's... It'll do for the night. Oh, are you staying the night with us? Oh boy, it's Lumber Party with Mama! Ooh. Silly boy, I'm with you all the time. <gasps> And you see, like, anime glowy eyes. Really? Absolutely. So, it appears that your friend Vol, and she's kind of, like, standing behind him as she's kind of started to walk towards you from where she came out of the shadows. Oh, no, and, no, no, uh, I understand. You you want me to kill him, right? No. Oh, okay. He found okay. something interesting. That odd man. I don't know where you went, but you met that man, and you went into a box. You couldn't see in the box. Uh, it was a uh, in that place. I was disconnected from you. I see. There was no chiral network there. That's terrible. We'll make sure but to give you vision. I want you to do something for me, if you could, during your journey. I mean, anything for you. 
I'm still good calling you mother, right? We cool? Double Somebody. finger guns at her? Okay. Act. Yes. I need you to find the, the architect kill that full. made that. Oh, okay. Oh, we're not on that stone. Okay. Uh, Obviously, this was a an, a magical artifact of Vol's people, but there was a tiefling that found it and enchanted it with the spirit of Imix. I want to find him. The tiefling or the Emix? Tiefling. I see. The and one who you... forged this weapon, as well as three others. Well, I, I currently have nothing. Let me check my appointments, and I pull out a blank piece of paper. I don't even have a calendar, so I guess, yeah. Uh, There's no rush. Just whenever you can get around to it. Now, now Mom, you, you, you hardly ever visit. You're not just coming over here asking for money, are you? Can't you stay and hang out for a little bit? Oh, I'm always here. I just don't always need to be talking. Hmm. Well, sometimes I, I like listen to your voice. Oh, boy, I do too. I do too. You, you just saw the way I guided full. You're fantastic at guiding and dodging. I've seen how much better you've gotten. I know, right? I, I feel like Rock Lee when they're facing Gar after the leg plates come off. I'm so proud of myself. Don't worry, I don't get that reference either. And I know you're in contact with the Traveler just due to your origins. Mm. I... <laughs> I am interested in him. Well, I mean, after the the divorce was pretty messy, are you sure you want to get back with father? I've never met the traveler before. He's avoided me. Well, I mean, that's something somehow we have get in common. him to agree to meet with me. I would be remiss if I did not reward you. That the traveler is not someone easily found. He, they, they're only found when they want to be. I don't know what I could do to entice them to show up. I will leave it to you. I trust your ingenuity. You're clever. More clever than you give yourself credit for. Say no more, fam. I will find the traveler and hook you up. Now know this. If I find him, he will not get away from my grasp. Oh, Ever. this is a different kind of find. I thought you guys wanted a conversation. I do not think that he will give up his secrets very easily, and I think the only way to get them from him is to keep him from leaving. I feel like this conversation is turning into a different direction than I was originally intending. It will just be a longer conversation than he wishes. This also sounds familiar as uh, Nox starts sweating a little bit more. I will leave it to you. You don't have to do it. My love is not contingent on your ability to do what I ask. Of course, it will be rewarded. And I understand if it can't be done, because like you said, he can only be found if he wants to be found, and I have tried to find him. If you can't, I will not fault you. But try and find this forger of these apocalyptic weapons. See if you can get it to a place where the traveler will either agree to meet with me or be there when I'm also there. Well, and no offense. I'd rather. <laughs> I'd love it if he ever met me. So, I mean, if if he talks to me, says hello, and I give him your phone number, try to set things up, I would. I'll make sure it happens. My, and, uh, my people will talk to your people. And she, like, kind of becomes shadow for a moment and, like, floats behind you, and you feel her, like, over your shoulder, and she smells you, and she says, I can smell him on you. His scent lingers. Your connection to him exists, and I'm sure that he has his eyes on you. Which is why I do things like this, to keep him from knowing that I am present. Keep your eyes open. Trust yourself. <laughs> I will see you later, my son. And uh, with that, time group continues to move again, and you just have the dagger in your uh, hand. Have and you met Craven? Stuff. He, uh, I, 
Oh. Yes, well. Okay. Um, this is just purely like, just like an RP question. Now, given that, uh-huh. like, as a ranger, I know primeval awareness, would mm-hmm. uh, but that requires me to expend a spell slot to like detect? But would you say just based yes. on like passive, Vol would have detected a hint of something? Out of curiosity. Uh, go. If you're willing to expend the spell slot, I'll allow the chance for you to feel like there was something off, but you won't know exactly what it was, if that makes sense. Yep, okay. Because that she six paused sense when time, somebody gave you know, a wet like, fart. But she's powerful enough that maybe you would have just kind of sensed that something was off just for a second. I'll, I'll expend the spell um, slot. So go ahead. This would be... I'm trying to think. Let's do Arcana. I think Arcana is probably the easiest way to do that. Yeah. But for you, I, since your spellcasting ability is in wisdom, use wisdom as your modifier. Okay. Um, Are you trained in Arcana? No, I am not, sir. So yeah, just add your wisdom modifier to a, a d20 roll. Uh, an 11. 11? Uh, honestly, I don't think... No. Okay. You don't. You don't sense anything off. Yeah. You don't have to expend the spell slot. Nothing is. You. You just. You just like. You're just playing with the dragon, okay. and you know that he's put, he's making um, more armor for it. And Vol looks weird for a second, or not. Sorry, Nox looks weird for a moment, and then looks up at you holding the dagger. Okay. I. Uh, as soon as time comes back on, Magdor's gonna like ugh, get chills and move closer to the fire. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I was, I was just curious if that was gonna, gonna be possible. Yeah. He's going to fall asleep next to the fire. Mutter uh, under my breath. You will live another day. Um, yeah, no, Vol's not going to want to do anything else that night. <laughs> Just going to let that sit there, huh? <laughs> okay. All I right. was going to slide right to the DMs. Yeah, just God. Okay. So you all go to sleep, um, and uh, through the night, uh, nothing... Uh, consequential in a negative way befalls you. Uh, sorry about that. That, that. Did I freeze up for a second? Just very yes. briefly. Yeah, it was uh, my... I I, got I'm not clicking on things, so my my uh, computer tried to go to sleep, so... Uh, yeah. Your you... internet scares me more than the Raven Queen right now. <laughs> oh, the internet's great, man. I got the new setup. It's super fast. Uh, ah, the quarantine edition. <laughs> I don't have that Kmart internet. Get out of here. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, you wake up in the morning feeling wonderful, uh, and the the weather itself. You think the weather is, it's not as bad as it was when you started, but it's worse than it was yesterday. So it's to a point where you're actually gonna have disadvantage. But you think if you track well enough, well, you could probably be there by late morning if you do it right or midday. <sighs> this uh this weather's gonna cause some issues again today, I think. Let's uh Let's get going. Let's see uh if we can get lucky. Alright. So go ahead and make I that. I never survival. thought you believed in luck, Bull. Luck is a big factor in a lot of battles. You just don't think about it too much because if you spend your time worrying about things out of your control, it's gonna affect you in ways that you wouldn't like. Right, and it's also important to not criticize people when they're down on their luck, I suppose, too. But when it, when is it a matter of luck and a matter of skill? That's for whoever to decide. We can only do our best. Um, before we head out, when I wake up, I'm going to look to Vol. Be like, uh, I think we'll have to fight when we get there. You know, I want to say I hope not. It'd be nice to spend some time with my brother first. But knowing everything we've been through so far, that's probably not the case. All right. And I'm going to put my hand on his chest. I'm going to do Blessings of the Forge. Be like, well, hopefully this will help you out. And then you're, uh, you get a plus one to your AC. Nice. Till the end Thank of you. the day. And Jalus uh, Nox will put the hand on the other side of Vol and then cast Guidance so they get a plus 1d4 for a minute. Alright. Is everybody ready? Uh, yes. Twilight back in his beard. It's gonna be cold today. Craven, <laughs> enter murder mode. You see anything that isn't us? 
do the thing, Julie. And Craven's eyes go. This is from like fucking Spider Man. <laughs> Murder and mode activated. Killed. Kill Son Goku. <laughs> Kill Son Goku. Oh my gosh. Okay, hitting yeah, you with that survival check. Disadvantage, but with guidance. Oh, okay. Um, hang on, let me just roll the guidance. Uh, 13. 13, uh, you think you make enough progress, uh, correctly, but the storm is just... You're in the right direction, but the storm is just so difficult that, uh, it's taking longer than previously expected. Um, and, uh, it takes a half a day longer than you thought, and you end up, um... Cresting a hill that you recognize with a specific tree that floats in a, in a way with a... Uh, you recognize the rock face, and you know that over this hill is your village in a small valley uh, in the upper parts of the spine. Um, as we approach it, Volt's gonna... Hill. Yeah, Volt's gonna... Out of pure anxiety and nerves, he's gonna draw his weapons. So you draw your weapons? Yeah. You see Volt look like he's ready to fight for some reason. So I'm, I I got my dwarven thrower in my one hand and still got the axe in I the would other. Dox would have the staff out, but I think they would be halfway through a joke because uh, they didn't realize what was going on. Just be like, why was the snowman looking in a bag of carrots? He was picking his... What's going on here? Uh, we're, we're approaching. I don't know what we're about to walk into, but... Um... Just, just Thinking be ready. His nose, nose. By the way, nose, mm-hmm. nose. People, that's that's humorous. That's humorous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the best you're gonna get out of all. That's humorous. <laughs> I hope we find something to cook. All this cold and no food. I could go for a good burger. Magnor is just gonna <laughs> hand uh, hand him some jerky from the rations kit. Ah, uh, well, I'll stop these jokes. Otherwise, uh, maybe Vol's gonna have a meltdown over there. And Vol's just and approaching the top of the hill. Yeah, you crest the top of the hill, and uh, as the sun has now set, you would expect to see lights in the village. Um, but against the backdrop of white snow, um, you can see the village but no lights. Um, And even from this distance, you can tell that parts of the village uh, are destroyed. But there are no lights in the village. No torches, nothing. Uh, What what are we looking at, Full, as I slip on the night vision goggles? That's... That's that's my village. Uh, That's... uh... Is it... Under curfew, it's softly dark over there. I don't see anything. Uh, the uh, only, the I only thing I thought you said is... glass. I thought you said glass like to party and drink all night. Uh, I don't really recall saying that, but that's not a daily event for us. Um, oh. I mean, surely once we once we defeat whatever is uh, threatening my village, we'd have a big feast. But. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that they put out all the lights to give them some sort of protection to miss the storm against the dragon. Um, what should we do then? Uh, I'm gonna look over at Noxy. Then the raven out. Does a, a raven, or I guess in this case, a, a crow? No, Raven sad black. Does a raven have dark vision? I guess is my big question. Question in my head. I'm gonna put my night goggles on the raven. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at me like I was crazy, but you know what we can. Uh, yeah, God. You know what we can really use right now. My glass of seeing really far away. That'd be nice, huh? I wonder what well, happened to I mean, it. Oh, that's what right. happened. It allowed, you to, it, it allowed you to buy that cloak. Wait, wait, you had one? Uh, how do you think I got all this money? Dowry? Who did I marry? You were with me the entire time, Magdor. <laughs> uh, 
inheritance. You, you it looks like, like everybody's a, dead over there. A fifth level flashback that just comes back where it goes like through different scenes and whatnot, just like Bull walking with the goal, Bull walking saying, Oh, her, her, I'll be right back. All the way to the moment to where Knox used uh, detect magic and found an item in Bull's uh, pocket after the fight with the uh, pirates. And it goes, No. Um, I'm sorry. Bull. I You need to give me a few minutes. I'll be right back. Okay. I think Vol was lying to us. I'm going to say mark the time, Glenn, because we're going to have to chop this one out. Vol passes out out of uh, sheer stress. <laughs> Vol, Vol. I'm going to pour my whole seven having a alchemy moment. on him. He's like, I need a second. I'm sorry for keeping that away from you guys. Oh, <laughs> nice, Vol. You know, uh, I'm sorry if, for keeping that away from you guys. If, if we're going to be open and talk about the things we sh- are holding away, I found a new mommy. There's a lot of dwarfs that are into that. Well, I, I mean, I'm not... Well, I can be a dwarf, I guess. Ooh, should I be a dwarf for this? He could throw both of us, one hand each. Could he, though? He's not that strong. I mean, he's he's bulky, but... When a cha- sh- ch- uh, changeling changes shape, uh, it's do they the whole body and everything, including the weight. Okay. Uh, it's a lot different versus like disguise self or alter self. So, like Anyway, that's the a one bit thing more. that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, they can I just can do medium hollow. or a small creature. I think they can. Go, they can't go larger though. So, question for you, Glenn, since we're sitting here chilling around for a second. Mm-hmm. What happens if I turn into a Warforged? What would happen? Uh, you would look you... like a Warforged, but you wouldn't feel like metal. Fleshy. Oh, I'd be a, like a super it's squ- a like, fleshy looking Warforged? Have you seen like people that paint, do body paint and stuff? That would be the effect of, yeah. you know, you would absolutely look like metal, but as soon as someone touched you, it would feel like like a weird like leathery So, flesh. like our cloaks? Yeah, yeah. In the... In, it, 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 Sort of, but it's not an illusion. It's just the fact that he can't make his skin actually harder, but it can, can do appear that for you. so it's harder. So I look as convincing as possible until I get touched. Yes. In that Which way, it is very similar be... to illusions. That's fair. Mm-hmm. I can re- work with that. Yeah. And then uh, I'll get my little uh, voice mod out and just do Blitzcrank voice the entire time. Uh, uh, Rolling uh. Stone <laughs> gathers no moss. Uh, uh, time uh. to eat ass dragon. <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. I hope Nick's okay. I think he just needed to talk to the roommate. If I were to take a wild guess, his landlord's internet is acting goofy and he needs Nick's help as IT support. Ah. Very possible. Is that an EV doll up there? I love it. Hey, Glenn, can I ask for a spoiler? Oh, mm. Honestly, I thought it was a shit ask, stain on his I made an answer. Two spoilers. Actually, hold on. I'm going to type one to you, because I'm curious. Oh, fuck. Dick's back. Oh, shit. Nick had his headset on. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Shit. You weren't off the mark there, Tyler. About the shit stain on about the wall? The internet. Yeah, I know, it's an EV. <laughs> not, not about the internet, hey. but I have been acting as tech support for my landlord for the last few days, and it's been rough, because it's been interfering with everything. Oh my god, you do the same thing as me, Nick. I always put a blanket on my lower half when I'm playing uh, games on my computer. No, it's just cold right now. Oh, I do the, the same utility thing. utility kilt. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm back now. He doesn't understand when I say I'm busy, he still comes down. Um, All right, anyway... Uh, I, I want to remake my joke because I don't know if Nick heard the gravity of it. That uh, uh, I guess it could have been inheritance. I mean, everyone looks dead down there. That's that's funny, Magdor. That's funny. Um, I I don't think we should be making any more jokes. Uh, as I like tuck away these loose bits of uh scrap paper that has all these no jokes I've written down. Let's uh. Let's head in. I head in where? All right. In- into the village. Just straight at it? Any sort of, like, rounding? Are you trying to be quiet? What are you doing? How are you, how are you entering the village? Um, there is some tree growth around the village just because having it be there 
caused seeds over time to kind of like get stuck next to the houses and stuff, but they're all bare because it is dead of winter, so. Um, and they're, I, conif- might... they're coniferous, so they actually have stuff on them. Is it dim light or dark light right now, or darkness? Um, it is dim because of the fact that the sun or the moon reflects off of the snow. So if you're wearing night vision goggles or have night vision, it appears as day light. You don't have any disadvantage on perception. What if apparently. you have dark vision? Yeah. Yeah, if you have dark vision or you have a way to give yourself if you don't have it naturally, so you all should be able to see just fine right now. Basically, I was wondering if uh, if I should send uh, Craven in, but I don't think uh, Craven would uh, be beneficial. I think Craven would still have a, a much harder time than you with those goggles on seeing things. Re- regrettably, in this current state, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Vold's going to point out some thickets of trees and be like, uh, let's, uh, "Let's be as quiet as we possibly can." Um, I I I want I want to say that I could sneak in first and then signal you, but. Not knowing what's in there, you might take too long and it might be too late. So I think we should all travel together and be as quiet as possible. Um, as soon if as he... We... Go ahead. I was going to say, as soon as he says that, Magdor's going to start just jumping around and running in circles. You don't hear anything. What? Oh, we said, well, okay, they're quiet. Yeah, I can uh, do whatever I want. Now, the snow is still depressed, though, so, like kind of a yeah. hard thing. You don't, like, walk on the top of a foot of snow, though. <laughs> so there's still sound <laughs> from the snow. If if we see somebody that we don't like, but they don't see us, just leave it to me. I'll distract them, but... Can I throw my hammer at them? Basically, uh, at anything that's not a Goliath. If you see a Goliath, please do not attack a Goliath. What, what are they under attack by? Uh, frost giants and dragons. What's the difference a between a frost giant and a goliath? One's hairier. Which one's hairier? That the frost giant. The and, ice giant. And they're also yeah. They're also bigger. Bigger than you? Yes, much bigger. Magdor's gonna have really? like a thousand yard stare. Oh fuck! <laughs> Nox gets a thousand yard stare. Oh fuck! <laughs> frost giants are not fun. Um, are we ready? Magdor's gonna take the jug of alchemy, take a swig, and hand it over to Vol. Vol's gonna take a swig. I look at the jug. May I? I and I'm gonna hand it to Knox. We all take a swig. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start chugging from this uh, alchemy jug, and uh, I'm gonna try to get a, like a slight, slight buzz out of it. Not enough to put you at any disadvantage for sure. Okay, if you insist. Yeah. And then I drink if you, more. If you get drunk then at I all, say, you have then the, I drink more. the poisoned condition, which means you have disadvantage on everything. So I don't want you to do that. Unless you want to Except do that. for save or suck spells. <laughs> I can't be poisoned, so I take another swig. Uh, make a save. Constitution saving For throw. Two swigs of alcohol. Oh, just two swigs? Okay, yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> little little anyway, liquid curse never hurt. <laughs> I got an 18. I take another swig. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you're fine. So, are you guys stealthing? Are you kind of making your way just cautiously, but not worrying too much about sound? I think we're gonna. We're, okay, okay. I'm gonna try okay, stealth wait, again. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah. So, with the dagger, I know I don't have most of its properties, but do I still have its flaws? Because mm-hmm. I would have been attuned to it by now. No? Okay, cool. No. Yeah, you also don't have sure. the flaw. I wanted to make sure I was acting according to the fr- flaw. Uh, yeah, then we're <laughs> going to go stealthily. Thank you for asking. Yeah, so go ahead and roll stealth checks, everyone, please. Do I get with these oh, boots? Shit. Do I get a bonus to I that? I thought we'd just win. You have advantage on checks that rely on sound, so I would say that technically this one will apply. So yeah, you'll have advantage on your stealth okay. checks. Okay. Nice. To not that be heard to as well. more than not be seen right now? Yeah. I rolled a nat 20, so... Ooh. Nice! Look at you! I fucking disappeared from existence. Oh, <laughs> oh wait! Oh no! I already say rutabaga, and I turn the cloak pure white. Awesome! Fucking snow camo. Nice. Um. Nice. I rolled an eighteen. Okay. 
And uh, I rolled a 16. I'm gonna Wonderful. turn my uh, fur cloak into like this furry looking bush. Awesome. So you guys sneak into some of those thickets that uh, Bold had pointed out. Um, you get into the village and you can see ow, that parts ow, of the ow. village are just completely encased in ice. Others of them look like they've been burnt down. Um, and as you kind of make your way through into some of these thickets that like creep into the village, um, you can see... What are your passive perceptions again? 13. <sighs> oh, I see how it is. Fool's waiting for me to say 11 so he can drop the big bomb. So at that big old 12 inch right on the table. 21. There we go. Oof. Yeah, Bull, you notice uh, what looks like in kind of like the center of the village from where you, you can see into the village and you can see um, all of you feel the vibrations of the footsteps uh, as it sounds like several pairs of feet moving through the village. Um, and as they come into view, probably 50 or 60 feet away you from, from you, 40 feet away from you, hiding behind a well is a Goliath child who looks terrified um and it's uh, the the giants two frost giants seem to be looking for something do i i see the frost giant now yeah as soon as i see do it i chuck my hammer all right roll initiative oh okay <laughs> fuck i mean that's what you told me no i shouted at you no <laughs> oh shit oh, yeah you know oh, shit. That's, that's okay oh no i uh rolled an eight Oh no. <laughs> Alright, so Vol, what'd you get? I rolled a seven. Nox. I rolled an eight. And Magdor. A six. Oh Jesus. Well the good thing is they <laughs> have the they don't have the alert feet, so they weren't expecting this. They are surprised. So the first round, they don't get to do anything, um, aside from take their reactions, which both of their turns are before all of yours, so they have their reactions now, but they lose their turns and no no movement or anything. Uh, so it is Nox first. Uh, so when I see Magdor like getting ready to toss his hammer, I'm going, shit! Uh, how many frost giants does it look like there are there? Uh, just two. Okay, and uh, are they close to anything? Uh, they're close to some of the buildings. Like I said, they're they're about 20 feet away from this kid hiding behind the well. About 20 feet. Perfect. Uh, uh I'm gonna panic, and I'm gonna immediately, uh, cast a fireball. Okay. Where? And I'm gonna try to, uh, aim it behind them. Okay. So you will hit some and, of the buildings uh, and stuff, but they may already be already partially destroyed and stuff. That's okay with you. At this point, uh, I see life, and it's more valuable than property. Uh, so I'm. They need to make a majestic uh, dexterity saving throw uh, of a DC 15. Wee. <laughs> yeah. I have to roll the damage no matter what. So. Let's see. Got to burn five charges to do this, and this is cast at fifth level because of the staff of power. Mm -hmm. Whoops! I almost did a cone of cold. That would have been really bad. Uh. Let's see, casting it at fifth level. Uh, let's see. I got 39 fire damage. 39 fire damage. Okay. Yeah, and both I, of I them are completely taken aback as they the fireball explodes, destroying one of the houses that was there, uh, but also severely damaging them both. Fireball! Anything else and, you want to move? Because uh, you're about you're about fifty feet away from them, just so or here on the fifty feet away from them, thirty feet away from the kid. I'm gonna leap out of the thicket and uh, have no fear. Nox is here, and uh, I'm just gonna stand there like uh, posing for a second and get their attention on me. Okay. And, All right. Uh, They're looking at you. <laughs> Eat yes. my ass, and I'm gonna use uh, a. Uh, what do you call it? Hexblade curse on one of them. Uh, does one look like they're more damaged by, than the other? Or does it seem like they both... All right. Uh, we're going to say it for the record. Number one, then, for your sake. Uh, okay, perfect. Frost giant number Thank one. I'm that gonna... will be the one on your left, technically. Okay. I'm going to put my hand on my uh, dagger. I'm going to go, eat my ass, frost giant. 
<laughs> uh, uh, like I, I, I'm, I'm actually crying at this point. Nox is like scared, but they're acting like trying to act brave. And you see this spectral purple dagger just kind of stab this frost giant's uh, shoulder. And that's it for my turn. Okay, Bull, you're up. After a fireball blows up on the floor. Um. And Magor, you're on deck. Vol is going to do something. Uh, I hope so. If you just sit there and look pretty. Uh, Volt's, <laughs> uh, so, uh, this, uh, Hexblade's curse, you've made it visible, right, Tyler? Would I be able to, see, like, would every anybody else be able to see it? Do you think? That would be super visible. Okay. It's, uh, it's an ethereal glowing purple dagger, so as long as you can see, like, color, you're good. Um... Yeah, ironically, that, when Volt's... you have dark vision, you can't see color. It's all in grayscale. <laughs> True. Fortunately, so Fold doesn't egg. have dark vision, so he's just going to see a glowing target, purple target. There we go. Wonderful. Um, which is what Vold's going to aim for, and I'm going to cast. Uh, I'm going to make a bow attack. Okay. Um, did you have your bow and... drawn? I thought you had your weapons drawn. I did have my weapons drawn. You were correct. Um, so what would it be for me to draw, like drop them and draw my bow? Do you have dual wielder the feet? No. Okay, then you gotta drop them and then you can pull your bow out as a uh, as a bonus act, or as a free action. Yeah. So drop my weapons on the ground. And drop uh, draw my bow. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and then I'm going to make uh, a long bow attack with ensnaring strike. Okay, and you will make this attack with advantage because you would stealth in, so it does not know where you are currently. But as soon as you make okay. the attack, that'll break the stealth. Um, does a twenty-seven Especially hit? Nox. Yeah, absolutely. Nox pops out. <laughs> Never fear, Nox is here. <laughs> Super great distraction. Da, 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 da. <laughs> um, for twelve damage. Okay. Um. And then they need to make a uh, strength saving throw or be restrained by magical vines. A Ooh, large or larger giants. creature has it. advantage on the saving throw. Oh, okay. fuck. Uh, it got a 22 to save, so. Yeah, that's going to beat it. Um, <laughs> like Michael Jackson. Um, so it's not going to do any extra damage from Just there, and then I'm going to proc uh, Colossus Slayer um, for what? an extra so you should just four roll. damage. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, 16 yeah, damage that in total. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. I was good. trying to get wrap my head around it's the spell because I don't use the that end often. Of, the end of my, I'm at the end of a sheet and I don't want to rewrite everybody's name, so I'm trying to make it uh, do oh, the damage sweet. in big yeah. chunks as possible. So Anyway, okay, no, you're, yeah, golden. you're golden. Anything else? Did you um, want to move? Yeah, and then immediately after that, Vol's going to move and try to navigate around, like try to draw as much aggro away from... Um, the, uh, you want to go right or left? Because oh. the one you attacked is on the left. Um, no, you know what? Vol's going to stay right now. Okay, cool. So yeah, you're yeah. just outside of it right next to Nox then. 50 yeah. feet away from both these giants. All right. Um, and that's it though, right? No, man. Yeah, that's it for me. Okay, Magdor, you're up. Uh, quick question. So with mm-hmm. dual wielding, it says um, that I get a plus one bonus AC while I'm wielding separate melee weapons in each hand. Does that mm-hmm. still count after I've thrown the Dwarven Thrower? Since it returns, yes. Okay. All right. Cool. So I wind up to throw and then Nox uh, fireballs and daggers them and I see the dagger. So I'm going to toss it towards the dagger as well uh, in my released. How far okay. away are they? 50 feet. 50 feet? Okay. So that's fine. Um, well, what's the short range on those things? 30? It's 2060. 2060? Well, you negate the disadvantage because you're hidden. Because you're still, you know, hiding, so you'll just roll well, normally on this. I rolled a 20, so. 20 hit. Dirty 20? 20? 20. Dirty 20. Okay, dirty 20, absolutely. Dirty hits. 20. <laughs> uh, for... It's like, my god. <laughs> and you said that they're large, right? Or they're yes, bigger than large? They are large. So they're deals. huge creatures, Tw- actually. So. 21 damage. 21! And then uh, I'm also going to jump out of the bush and um, kind of move Nox out of the way and walk in front of Nox. Okay, yeah, so now you're I'm... not going to steal all the glory this time. 
How far in front of him did you go? Because he is 50 feet away. Feet. Five feet, so you're 45. Oh, he's, he, wait, you're 50 feet? Oh, damn. You move. Uh, I moved 25 feet then. And uh, Wait, so you're going to be 25 feet away from feet. him? No, no, I moved in front of Nox. Yeah, so you're 45 five feet, feet in front away. of Nox. So you're 45 feet from the giant. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because you just I said you I moved 25 moved feet. I, I thought you said I... I thought you said I was within five feet of the frost. I'm like, ah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> you said I thought you said 25 too. feet, so I was like, uh, yes, I am death wish. No, no, I hear me. It's like I move five feet of where front of Noxes. Cool. And I just say you're not stealing all the glory this time. Uh, cool. I, I'm not trying to steal any glory. I'm just trying to distract them. <laughs> All right, here's a good, here's your scale, boys. Uh, I put up a picture in the Discord chat, so you can see the the one with the big axe is a frost giant. So, um, and the other, so yeah, all your humanoids are around, them, so you can see what you're up against. Um, I believe they're about 17 feet tall, so they make bowl look real small. Um, and after you do that, you throw a step in front of Nox, oh, Jesus, um, and you see um, the kid look at you terrified in, in between this fray now and he's too scared to move so he stays behind that well uh quivering and uh let's see what happened let me see real fast yep yep failed that wisdom save by a lot so he uh you see a little bit of water kind of trickle down his leg pee. um <laughs> it's p uh and now uh we're back to I'll the top that. and Maybe it is on it both of their turns before you and they one of them uh, that you've all have kind of focused fire on uh, takes some cover behind one of the big uh, you know the houses that's been frozen into a block he moves about 20 feet back and then reaches into the ground and just pulls up a giant boulder and hucks it at you guys um, and it's going to go at bowl so what is your armor class, Bull? 17. Is that the plus one I gave you? Yes. Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Oh, wait, sorry. Just a second. Yep, still gotcha. It, it was further than his short range, uh, so I had to roll with disadvantage. Uh, And you take 26 bludgeoning damage as a boulder slams into you and crashes past you. Um, I'm sorry, how much? 26. Ah, I see. Um, I think I will use my reaction for Stone's Endurance. endurance? Yeah, I figured as much. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> That's um, his turn. So I, the I, other one... Uh, what's up? I only take uh, 19 of that because I rolled a 7. Nice. Negate some of that. Good work. Uh, <laughs> Good job. And then uh, the other one also digs into the ground as it runs forward. The fully healthy one pulls another boulder out and chucks it at a different member of the party. It goes at Magdor. There's a lot of boulders in this village. All right. <laughs> but this one... Yeah, that's just a mechanic they have. It's just called rock. They can make it whenever they need to make a ranged attack. Uh, I got a 26 to hit against you. Oh, I beat it. Okay. I'm gonna look at it now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You joker. Uh, 25 bludgeoning damage as you are smacked in the face by a boulder that continues past as it pushes you to the side. Um, and this one is now five feet away from you, Magdor, looming as it draws a battle axe and charges. Um, and now it is your turn, Nox. This giant is ten feet away that from means, you. Yeah, this motherfucker is ten feet away from me. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go... Ah. And... Uh, <laughs> I am going to, uh... Good question. <laughs> Glenn's excited because he's waiting for me to make a mistake and get beheaded. Uh, 
I am going to uh, twin spell haste okay. on Vol and Magdor. Uh, okay. For those who are curious, uh, it gives you quite a bit. But uh, let's see. I uh, get a couple of benefits, or using being able to twin spell it uh, means both of you are going to be able to get it. Besides one, it's a concentration. Uh, your speed is doubled. You get a plus two bonus to AC. You have advantage on deck saving throws, and you get an additional action to do either a melee attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. Uh, not dodge? And, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, not dodge. <laughs> and so, and I'm going to do that and go, you're right, Magdor. Uh, you're going to get all the credit today. And I am <laughs> going to use my feature Slip into Shadow. Or I can uh, hide, uh, use the hide action as a bonus action, even if you have no cover or you're under observation. Okay. So that just uh, go and roll so a stealth I'm... to determine what they need to beat to try and find you. Okay. Uh, an 11. Great. So if they really want me <laughs> specifically, they're welcome to it. Yeah. Pretty much, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, great turn. Did you move back at all, or are you just kind of like hiding where you were 10 feet away? Now, the question is, if I slip in the shadow, can I move while hiding with this feature specifically? What do you think? Because you kind, you kind of, well, mechanically, you should say no, but hear me okay. out. <laughs> uh, you did say that I oh, here. hit into essentially the, hit into the ethereal plane of sorts. Kind of. What uh, if we have you move at half speed if you're in that? I'll work with yeah. you here, because... I don't know. Like, that's a big axe. Yeah. I don't want to... Yeah. Y- yeah. Yeah. It's a real big axe. Yeah. It's, like, taller than you. A uh, blade. <laughs> I, I don't want to risk... Because uh, if this giant is over three times my height, uh, it probably has reach. It is. It's going to look like just lean over Magdor, kind of push Magdor down and swing at me the moment I try to get him out of the way. So I'm just going to... You just see me uh, instant it transmission. It will out. attack you with disadvantage, if you, even if you stealth away. In the ethereal plane? Yeah. Wow. This... Mechanically. Oh, oh, oh. In the now ethereal the plane. Well, off. does it say you slip into the ethereal plane in the feature? No, because it's a custom feature right. you gave me. Yeah, it's a custom feature from a dragon mark. It's an actual thing in the game. A uh, greater dragon mark okay. of shadow. So it does it. So, I mean, but it does allow you to do that hide without, you know. You know, having but any no, cover. No, fuck it. I'm staying here. Right. Let's do this. So you shit. are stealth right where you are. It doesn't know where you are for the, you know, unless it tries to try and find you. Um, okay, let's do this shit. I love it. Good work. Okay. Uh, hey, d- is there anything Mag- else? Magdor has a question. Yeah. Does the pseudo dragon get a turn? Pseudo dragon can if you want, but Vol has to control him, and it also risks him oh, no, being t- a target. He's not a familiar. I'm gonna so. telepathically <laughs> tell uh, Craven to give uh, give Magdor the help action. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and if you want Craven to start doing things on your turn, just let me know, and so he will. Okay. Technically, what he does is he grants help. I think on the next attack, right? So it's the next attack. Yes. Okay. Cool. Great. Uh, cool. And so I figured I'd just help him hold this action for Magdor. He does a fly. He does a little bit of a help for Magdor. Uh, and it's Vol's turn. Um, I am going to um, make a uh, another longbow attack, um, but this time with one of the walloping arrows. Against the one that's farther away or closer now? Uh, the one that's closer. The closer one is, yeah, it's 10 feet away from you. So. Um, and I can't remember if we uh, discussed this. Um, does... Does it do like the normal arrow damage as well? Uh, I think that was the downside is that it didn't. Oh yeah, okay. we decided that it would it would add your modifier, just no arrow number, just a flat modifier number. So whatever you would normally add to the arrow, just no dice added. it added. It. Okay. Um. All right. So here we go. Does a twenty-seven hit? Absolutely does. For um. What is this? Um, Three dex plus two, so five damage? Yeah, and remember, this is, he's hurt, so you get to add velocity. Yeah, I was, I have to do that too, so six total. So six total? Yeah. Okay. 
and he has to make a strength saving throw against that, correct? Yeah, uh, I believe the DC was 10 from the link you sent me. Mm -hmm. He failed it! How? I rolled up the goddamn front, I rolled giant. a one! <laughs> Sometimes um, the dice have train me. All right, yeah, he Oof. gets knocked prone, um, charging forward, and, uh, yeah, he's prone on the ground. And then I'm going to make a, another longbow attack against the one that's further away, uh, okay. this time with the regular arrow. He does have, this one does have cover. I said it, it tried to hide behind one of the houses, so it, right. it will have a bonus to its AC. Does a 22 hit? 22 does hit. Okay, um, and I will use my ensnaring strike again and try and uh, okay. get it restrained. What is the save again? Come on, that one again. Uh, DC 14. Okay, he is not restrained. Okay. Um, 13 damage, though. Okay. And All right. I am going to move. Uh, I'm going to dart off to the left and try okay. and get in a position where I'm... I'd like to get in a position where I'm... No, actually, Volt's not going to move again. Uh, wait, sorry, I'm, I'm very confused. Volt's going to drop his longbow where it is. He's going to pick up his short sword, because I've dr okay. drawn my short sword and my dagger, and mm -hmm. I don't know if I can pick up my dagger this round as yeah, well. Yeah, I'll let you get them both, cause if you use okay. your bonus action for it. Um, I already used my bonus action to cast a spell, so then I have my short sword in hand. five feet of movement hand. to grab it. Okay. Fine. Sure, um, and then uh, with the remaining 55 feet, I want to navigate to a spot where... Um, I'm kind of uh, behind a building, but also still now you in like. Are in the reach of this huge creature, so it will make an attack of opportunity as you think. I'm Which in the one? reach of this, uh, the one right it's next to ten, us. It's got a ten foot reach. Yeah. Isn't it prone though? Yeah, it can still attack him. Has Just disadvantage on the attack roll though. Battle? Disadvantage on the All attack right. roll. You want to move? Swing low. No. I mean, you can use your you know disengage what? as uh, an additional action because I, I did that with I did that with longbow. Uh, my second longbow attack. I can only make one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Do it. Run away. No. You know what? Uh, Vol's gonna him. hunker Be down. Smart. Vol's gonna hunker down, and then uh, I don't have the fight yet glad. from the legendary I dagger. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Cool. Yeah, Volt's going to hunker down and just stare down this one frost giant here, and that's prone. Great. I love it. All right. Uh, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So for dual wielding, I can attack with both weapons, right? One is an action, count? the second is a bonus action, as long as they're both light. All right. And so does haste give me another bonus action and action, or do I have one bonus action, two actions? No, uh, the haste action cannot. It says on the haste spell that can only attack once with the haste action. It doesn't proc so extra attack. Could I or, cast a bonus spell then attack twice with my two actions? Yeah, so you could uh, haste action attack, regular action attack, bonus action spell, yes. All right, that's what I'm going to do. So first off, I'm going to cast Searing Smite on Ooh. myself. Yeah. And uh, I am going to, at this frost giant that's in front of me. I'm just going to chuck my door and thrower like directly at it. Any right ranged its legs. attacks against a prone creature, now whether or not they're huge or not, will have disadvantage. Oh, against a prone and creature? It, yep, if they're oh. prone. Yep. Well, in that case, I, I'm right next to it, so I'm just going to jump up with both my hammers and just fucking smash them. <laughs> both I of his it. kneecaps. That's kneecaps gone. Now, that should have advantage, right? Because yes, he's prone? Because he's prone, yeah. He okay. doesn't actually have to utilize the help action from your creature yet. So, if somebody else True. wants to, uh, you could. Raven could give you advantage if you just want to attack regularly, uh, range for one attack. But that's your call, Brandon. No, I I'm fine, Smashman. Okay. Alright. With Searing Hulk Smite. Smash. So Let's do it. I gotta, so one of those I gotta, attacks I gotta, I gotta has Searing Smite, out. right? It's the next one to hit, right? The first attack to hit after you yeah. cast the spell. Cool. Uh, so the first one was 16. That hits. And, oh, it hits? Yeah. Oh, oh. wow, it does? Yeah. They're just, like, wearing patchwork Shit, animal okay. skins. They're not wearing a lot of armor. Fuck, going for the Nads. <laughs> All right, so it deals... Go Nads and strike. Uh, the Ball Crusher. It deals 10 damage. Okay. Uh, one of that damage being fire damage and causes him to ignite. Okay. Uh, Nothing on him. Oh, God, it's going to be... 
Yeah, huh? it's not flammable. Not, not even all those animal skins? No. They're tanned? No, they're good. Well, he, does he still take damage each turn? Oh, does that is that a thing? Yeah, no, no, it ignites him. At the start of each of his turns until the spell ends, the target must make a constitution saving throw. Yeah, that's a, a feature of the spell. It, it, there's damage. no contingency on it having to burn things on it. That's just what it's happens when you hit. Yeah, that still oh, happens. He, yeah. He, all he's all his sweat's I'm, I'm seeing it. Uh, <laughs> all right, and then the second one is going to be yeah, one-handed Warhammer. Does a 25 hit? Uh, no. That- Oh man! Well, you just have a seven. sixteen have advantage. or seventeen right. and hit. You're right, I have <laughs> you advantage. You rolled nine higher, and you're like, "This is good." So uh, next time I roll he... a thirty, I'm gonna ask you if it hits. <laughs> All right, that's another uh, twelve damage. <laughs> good work, buddy. All right, so remind me on the fire proc so he makes that con save, okay? If I remember, I I'm relying on you to remember because I won't remember. So, <laughs> okay, anything else? Uh, no, that's it for me. All right, the kid sitting there uh, finally steals himself and books it in the opposite direction. Uh, like, not towards where the other giant is throwing At shit from. Tell us our names. He runs to the side. Uh, so he, using the dash action, seems to get away uh, from the immediate danger. Um, and now we're back to the top. Uh, the, the other frost giant's getting away. That's a child, Magdor. Like, it's like a five I can't foot tall thing. <laughs> it's not seven feet tall. A five at all. foot child. <laughs> a big child. Great. Um, like a young Great Dane. Back to the top uh, with the uh, giant that is back in cover. And it is going to. We're going to see if he notices the kid. Ah, he notices the kid. So now the kid is an eligible target as he pulls another boulder out of the ground. Well, I think I hit whoever I threw this at. All right, choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As all of you are eligible targets who are equal threats. Why are you making us pick instead of you doing it? Because I don't. It worked out last time. I didn't choose before I rolled it, and I don't want to play favorite. Seven, eight. Okay, it hits you, Mac. Nine, ten. Okay. (laughs) Oh, I clipped there. Sorry. Thank God. You're fine. Uh, hit my now, door. do you want? I, I'm going to be frank with you. I critically hit on this this boulder throw. Do you want me to take the static number doubled or roll the damage twice? I'll be real with you. It's four d ten twice. Take the static twice. What's the static? I don't. Whatever he hasn't rolled like sixty percent static is static is twenty eight like twenty five or something. Okay, I'm, so it's I'm either a gambler. Roll it. Roll it. All right. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh. you know, if I took average, it would nearly kill me, <laughs> like flat out. So I'm afraid to see what he has. How many hit points do you have, buddy? 37. It did 63 damage to you. So 74 uh, is the most you could take for dying instantly. Yeah, so you're not dead, but you're definitely unconscious. How much did it do? 63. Do I have to subtract that from what I have now, or do I just put it at zero? You're at zero, making death save. Okay. Right. And you hear him yell oh. from the other side like a war cry in giant. Um, as as, uh, as this rock takes goes flying, the face. as this rock goes flying towards Magdor, he's just gonna pull out his jug of alchemy and take one last swig. <laughs> as the jug goes flying, <laughs> I just see a blood smear where Magdor was, and it's um, like, be- oh. All right, Magdor, I need you to roll a dice because you told me you pulled your jug of alchemy out. If it's odds, it hits and breaks the jug of alchemy. If it's even, it death. just hits you. We're fighting Satan. Did you roll an odd? I did. It breaks the jug of alchemy as it knocks your friend unconscious. He doesn't even want to be resurrected now. Just kill him <laughs> flat out. Jeez. So what, happens when a jug of, what happens when a jug of alchemy breaks? It breaks with the last liquid you chose for it to come out of, come out of it. So that, three gallons remaining, of three ale gallons just of fucking... Ale just, <laughs> yeah. 
cover your unconscious body. You know, there's he, worse ways he for went Norse just to die. die. I can say, this is exactly how he went to go. <laughs> if you die, if you die, you're not Death dead. Death say, constitution die, saved, and not drown. Uh, but that's the end of his turn, and now we're to the other giant, who is now in front of all of you. It doesn't know where Nox is, so the only target remaining is Cole. And it's going to make two and attacks. And the child. Child, it, it, that, it ran behind him. He didn't see that. Oh, okay. The other okay. one had a view of it as it ran out from behind the wall, but this guy has his back to the kid, so. Uh, he's making two attacks against Vol with its great axes. What is your armor class? 19. All right. Both hit. All right, once again, static or rolls? Take the static roll. What's the static? Here, Magdor's last words. Uh, it's going to be 31 per hit. I'll take the rolls. Take the rolls. Oh, like a this boss. Is... Okay, the first is only 14. The okay. second. <laughs> Holy fuck. Good call, man. Uh, the second one's only 12. I rolled four ones on 60 12. <laughs> Are you conscious? Single digits. Oh boy, here we go. Now it's your turn, Nox. You saw Magdor go down and Vol took a very, very rough hit. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Nox would see the smear that is Vol. Uh, sorry, Magdor's body on the ground and goes. Oh, hell no. I'm going to slip out of my hide and uh, I'm going to stare at this giant frost giant in the eye and say, All right, buddy, it's you and me, fuck face. And uh, I'm going to immediately cast uh, Healing Word as a bonus action on Magdor to bring him to life. Okay. And uh, I am going to start. Uh, this is uh, fire or frost giant number two, correct? Yes. 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 The one that is right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'm going to start blasting it with uh, Eldritch Blast. Wonderful, and it's ten feet away from you, Just so you don't have disadvantage. That's when Reach helps you. <laughs> and I'm going to have Gross of Health. Well, I, it doesn't really matter if Gross of Health's me or not, but uh, yeah. I got a 26 and 24 in both Eldritch Blasts. Yeah, both, they both hit. Okay, and I'm going to sh- start shouting, Mother Traveler, anything? Yeah, who wants to come in? Give the the big guy hello, uh, and I do. Oh shit! Only five damage. Between both Eldritch Blast, you have Agonizing Blast, right? Why? Why do you keep assuming that? I'm not level two in Warlock oh, yet. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Give us a level, damn it! What kind of Warlock are you? <laughs> what What health do I have? Uh, oh uh, yeah, good question. Also, good question. Uh, let's see. Oh, cool. Uh, let's see. It's a while. 1d4 plus my charisma, I believe. The roll 1d4 plus that. Uh, 7. You're a 7. Nice. Hey, I've got more health than Vol. And Vol, it is That's your so turn. True. Unless Magdor, or unless uh, Nox, sorry, you were hidden, so technically you would have had advantage on both of those attacks. You did have advantage, right? Yes. yes. Okay. But, but you didn't crit no matter what? It does, okay. It, I guess it does roll no. both of them for you. I'm not, yeah, I'm not used to that. So, great. So, anyway. A question for mm-hmm. you. Uh, I read up through haste, mm-hmm. and it says until the spell ends, the creature's speed is, you know, all the special effects. It doesn't say anything of if the creatures go down. So, Oh, yeah, no, you, you still have Meg- concentration, so you can, you can have chosen to keep it up on him because he wasn't dead. The only reason I would have that end is if you lost concentration or if he died. So yeah, or I you he know, still get, has die too. Yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you dying would mean you losing concentration. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he still okay. has haste. I Vol, jumps up, buddy. up immediately after being healed. <laughs> All right, let's fucking go. Um, I'm gonna cast uh, Hunter's Mark on the one closest. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna go right into swinging. Okay. Um, 
Alright. Are you focusing on number one or number two right number now? Number two. Just, uh, for the flavor. one right in front of us. Okay. Yeah. yeah, number one is still like 50 or 60 feet away. So. Okay, um, so it's going to be um, basically three short sword attacks because my dagger is my offhand, but I use my bonus action. Um, uh, so, so it's attack, hang on. haste action attack, offhand dagger attack. Yes. Um, and um, on I have two inspiration points. I already rolled one. I'm going to use my inspiration on the last two. Give okay. myself advantage. Wonderful. Um, all right, so 15. 15 hits. 19 and 26. Okay. Love it. Uh, let three me hits. Also, there's three of us around this guy. Wouldn't we you... be flank him at that point? I would say once the Magnor stands up, yes. You are 10 feet away, so you can't help with flanking. Uh, but once Magdor's okay, turn rolls around, fair. he will, if he positions himself on the opposite side, he can gain advantage from both. Yes. Okay. Um, so my total here is uh, 40 damage across three swings Ooh. and uh, Colossus Slayer and Hunter's Mark. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you just fucking start hacking into this guy, cutting up his legs, because that's about as high as you can reach getting up to his waist. But obviously eviscerating a part of his leg. Um, did you want to move or do anything else? No, Volt's gonna die. He's gonna stay right there. He's gonna die if I just it's, it's your turn, Magdor. Like I said, if uh, you stand so up, you got, right you got. Now? If yeah, you're prone. But if you stand up, you'll have flanking against this guy. All right. Uh, so if I stand up, I just lose my speed, or you lose half your movement speed. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to crawl around. You you see tears. Well, if you uh, crawl around, you also move at half speed. So you might as well stand up. Well, it, just just for flavor, he's going to oh, ca- okay. crawl around in the in the <laughs> alcohol that's covering the ground. <laughs> and you're so going to up on the way. <laughs> yep, and then stand up, and he's going to uh, kind of half-heartedly but smash him with a hammer. Just go, kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to smash him with a hammer. You didn't kill Magdor, but you killed a spirit. Uh, doing doing 13 damage. Did you roll the hit? It was a 27. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just didn't hear that. Sorry. Come on, give yourself advantage, man. Okay. Oh, yeah, 28. I have advantage. 28, and you have two hits, right? It, no, no, I'm just doing one. Okay. Uh, because for my bonus action, I'm going to Remember, you have a haste action. You have a haste action. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so I'll do another hit then. There you uh, go. With the yeah, other Warhammer. It's just. Uh, uh, and I'm going to hit with a 12. You have advantage. You're not going to hit with a 12. With advantage. That was okay, yeah. So the second hit misses. How much damage does it do? The first one? You, it, oh, okay. 13. 13? Wonderful. And then okay. Magdor's just going to hold his hands up and uh, cast Mass Healing Word. Ooh. Uh, on uh, the three of us, and I don't even know. Oh, if, full health, but yeah, okay. I don't even know if he needs it, but I'm gonna cast it. Okay. And heal me, heal me and Vol for four health. Wonderful. All right. And then put my arms down. So, do you want to pause here, or do you want to finish this fight? I can go for like ten more minutes. We can finish this fight in ten minutes if you got it. Yeah, I've got it. If I break the staff in half, got it. Big brain. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, we'll keep going as long as you're good with it. I, 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 for some reason, I was thinking because quarantine, we didn't have to worry about that, but I will push through this. Cool. Um, after Magdor's turn, the kid Next is week. Uh, hiding. <laughs> um, and now we're back to the frost giant who is right in front of you. Or sorry, the frost giant who is back. And he's going to determine randomly once again who he is throwing at. As all of you seem like you're a pain in the ass, um, he throws another boulder. This time, a 12 to hit against you, Magdor. How does that do? Eat shit, misses. giant! Yeah, he misses. <laughs> it's the end of his turn. It's the other one. It's in Ma- front of both of you. He's got two targets. Magdor Odds or evens, just kind of, uh, Evens. Yeah, all three right. targets. I got... Uh, oh, yeah, three targets. So, yeah. Uh, so, the first one goes at Vol. Oh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on the second attack. Five, six. Okay. Three, four. Okay. That leaves me with Uh-oh. one, two now. Yeah. yeah, it goes against you, uh, Nox. So this one is against Nox. I got a 15 to hit. 
Ah, uh, that's gonna miss. I'm gonna use my staff just to parry it to the ground despite the weight, because I, like, I called his shit out. I'm trying to get his attention. And I got a 13 against Vol. Doesn't hit. All right, now we are on to uh, <laughs> Nox's turn. Here we go. All right, I'm 10 feet away. Uh, I got haste going. I got all the buffs I can get in running. And uh, I'm going to fucking Babe Ruth point my staff at this guy's face. I'm going to go, Raven, help me out with this one. And uh, nice. I'm going to cast uh, Chromatic Orb, uh, third level yes. uh, Let's fire. Go. Let's go. Hell yeah. Uh, what does he have to do? Or is this a hit? This is a hit, right? This is to hit. Okay. So with advantage, I'm going to try to blast him with a uh, level 3 chromatic orb. Sweet. Uh, with advantage, I have a 15. 15 hits. Yes. Exactly what I needed. Exactly uh, let's what see. you needed. So, <laughs> let's see. It's uh, 3d8 uh, normal, uh, so it's 5d8 fire. So let's see. Oh, shit. They're supposed to be no. taking 1d6 fire damage at the start of his turn, no, too. No, but, then, uh, you, damn but it. then that was a you concentration spell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but it's still procced once. Yeah, I would have procked one time. Darn. Uh, they're going to take fire, or 25 fire damage uh, to the face. How, do you, how, good how does uh, Chromatic Orb kill this giant? Uh, I'm going to do uh, what my name uh, from Luskin implied. I'm going to be the face melter. Wonderful. Melts his I'm face, gonna he Ruth, burns. I'm going to bait Ruth, aim and then just... Falls down in a slump of heaping bones and sinew burning. Smells terrible. Yeah, the giant looks furious from the other side of the square. And I'm gonna, as the giant collapses, I'm gonna lower the staff and start to aim over at that guy, and I'm just gonna shout in common, you're next, bucko, and I'm gonna start walking towards him using my uh, full 30 feet. Sweet, so you are 30 feet away from him after your 30. Um, okay. And now it is Vol's turn. Noticing that this giant got incinerated to some extent. Um, and Vol not doing super hot. Um, he is going to... I'm going to use my bonus action to switch Hunter's Mark to the other giant. Um, okay. And then I'm going to drop my weapons again. Uh, go run back, pick up my longbow, and take cover behind some buildings and pelt him with my arrows. Okay. When, um, you have two attacks, right? Yes, sir. Uh, first was a 25... Hits. The second one was a nine. Critical failure. A uh, critical failure misses. Absolutely. Uh, Squad roll damage for the first one. Colossus. And Hunter Smart. I'm just waiting for this to catch up. Um, was it wall of ammunition or just regular? No, just regular. Regular. regular? Okay, nineteen. Uh, nineteen. Yes. Wonderful. Cool. Um, and that's it for Volt's turn as he's out of breath and not scared, but realizing that this is a tough uh, spot. All right, Magdor, you're up. Uh, Magdor sees this giant fall, and he's been just pensive. Uh, that rock flew over him. He didn't even care. He's just going to slowly walk towards the other giant. Just evidence is, uh, no, Inya, only time will tell displays. Right. Da, 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 and, uh, da, 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 I have 25 da, da, feet, so how far, how close am I to the other giant? Uh, 35 feet away, if you finish your movement heading towards it. Oh, no, no, you have haste. You can yeah, go closer. So you have 50 feet. 25 feet? Yeah, you're 10 feet away if you use all your movement. All right, so I want to get to 20 feet from him. Okay. Now, you could and, use your uh, haste action to dash and get even closer. No, no, no. Okay. I just want to get 20 feet and throw my orbital <laughs> thrower at him. Yeah, let's see it, boy. Uh, and can I throw it twice? Yeah. With haste? Okay. Mm-hmm. It says one weapon attack, not one melee. Mm-hmm. Why haste? It's so Back strong. On. It's strong. A 15. Hits. Uh, to deal 20 damage. 20? Okay. And a 29. Uh-huh. So that was a natural 19, so close. 13, so... How do you kill this other frost giant? Magdor throws the uh, hammer. He doesn't die, so he just gets pissed off. He throws it again, and as he throws, he falls to the ground and uh, just lays there. He doesn't know what happens. Okay. He's just laying face first into the ground. Okay. Um... You guys are out of combat, and from the other side of the square, you can see the terrified Goliath child peek his head out 
Um, and uh, next week we'll delve into the mystery of what happened to your village exactly and where they have all gone. And you all gained 2,600 experience points. I have no idea what that means. This sounds cool, though. I've, yeah, I've, huh. I've not been tracking. Not, we level up. I, Who's we been doing XP. milestone? Yeah, you said that, but then we were like, eh, okay. All right. And then uh, we left, XP let Brandon track. from level five. Then. Actually, give you an e- oh, no. even 3,000. From level five, we went down to level. Oh, you were level six? Even 3,000 XP for the RP and the travel. Plus whatever Brandon's been keeping track of, because I know he's been keeping track You've of You've been keeping it. track of 1,700, or 17,000, I mean. There you go. Another level. Is that level seven? Wait, what, what, Brandon? I don't know. I'm looking at it real quick. 17,000? No, we're 6,000 off from level 7. Oh. Doing great. I was like, we need to kill a so dragon. We would have to do another six spikes to get the level 7 <laughs> with the XP system. Maybe it'll happen. I don't know. Maybe we'll go back to milestones. No, <laughs> I don't happens. like milestone after a certain point because of the fact that uh, you gain levels too fast and then you just play 30 games with your character and they're level 20. You know, that's not... You get no longevity out of it. You can find me on Twitter at Two Times Tyler. <laughs> uh, this is post-discussion. You can find me on Twitter at LR the 11th All Letters. You can find me on Twitter at Zigzagoon. You can find me on Twitter at Glenn Houston. We are a part of Casual Master Quest, a podcast network dedicated to giving you the video game news and tropes you deserve. You can find the show everywhere you can Google and on Twitter at CMQ Network. That was Nick. That was Brandon. That was Glenn. This is Tyler. That is a headless uh, frost giant. We'll see you next week with another. We will see you next week with another session of Casual Quest Masters. And don't forget the never stop the quest. Bye bye. Bye. Getting getting hit by a fucking rock and giant axe hurts surprisingly. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Casual Quest Masters. Thank you so much to you, our listeners, for being here, and to Sirenscape for allowing us to utilize their amazing programs for sounds and music. Check them out at sirenscape.com. We hope to see you here next time for the next episode of Casual Quest Masters.